Hi everyone, I'm Arbazir and welcome to Hearts of Our Own 4. So, Hearts of Our Own 4, in case it's not obvious, is a World War II grand strategy by Paradox Development Studio, and it's coming out on June the 6th. I've been playing it quite a bit before starting an actual recorded series, and it's a lot of fun. So, this is not going to be a completely blind run, I already got around 20 hours in the game, Let's get straight to business then, shall we? I've been thinking about what exact nation to play. And oh yeah, before we get to that, there are two possible starting dates in the game. You can start in 1936, which gives you a few years to prepare for the actual war, or you can start in 1939, right before the war starts. We're going to play the first one, 1936, that gives us a few years to prepare. And we will need a few years to prepare, because I decided to play as Poland. I wasn't going to do that originally, because, you know, there's that small minor detail where Poland gets steamrolled by Germany in 1939. <laughs> so it's not a very easy nation to play, but I had a few runs as Poland, not very successful ones, mind you, and it's actually a lot of fun to play. So we're going to play as Poland. Now, the goal isn't to win necessarily, although I will obviously do my best. But the goal, especially for the first run, is to survive as long as we possibly can. Because winning as Poland will require a fairly refined strategy, which I don't have just yet because I didn't play enough. 15-20 hours was definitely not enough, and I didn't play that exclusively as Poland. But yeah, we're playing as Poland. There are three different difficulty levels, and we could go with Recruit, which would give us plus 20% production efficiency camp, minus 5% research time and plus 25% political power gain, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to play on the regular, which doesn't give us any bonuses or penalties. And I will be keeping historical AI focuses. Let's get started! So, since this is the first Hard 7 on 4 game on the channel, I will talk a bit about the basics, about how the game actually works, but at the same time, I'll do my best to keep the game moving, at a reasonable pace. Especially since we need three years to prepare for war. So there won't be a whole lot of action for the next three years. But we need these three years to prepare, especially as Poland. So, let's get to business, shall we? Immediately when you start a new game, regardless of who you're playing as, there are a few things you have to take care of, before even considering unpausing the game. Let's talk about them one by one. So, first of all, one of the most important concepts in Hearts of Run 4, the focus tree. This is the Polish focus tree, which is unique to Poland. Some nations will have their own unique focus trees, others will have a generic focus tree shared with many other nations. And the focus tree basically represents options available for your country, ranging from industrial, from military, to purely diplomatic ones and political ones. So, for example, we can start our own faction by going for the Baltic Alliance. We can go left and seek accommodation with USSR. We can go right and seek accommodation with Germany. Or we can draw closer to Britain. Or we can start a faction, because some of these are mutually exclusive. If I hover over here, then this is mutually exclusive with internationalism. So we can go one or the other. Then we got things like Central Region Strategy, which gives research bonuses. A lot of these three are research bonuses. I'd say probably around one third, maybe a little bit less. But a lot of these are research bonuses. And this basically allows you to get one tech in that specific category 50% faster, for example. Not all of them are 50%. In case of Poland, there's a 75% bonus right here, but it's mostly 50% here. So instead of getting a tech in, let's say, 400 days, we can get it in 200. There are also things like a civilian factory for free. These are some of the best decisions early on, because civilian factories are very valuable. We'll talk about that in just a moment. We can get yet another civilian factory down here. We can get some military factories. These are also quite valuable. And these are completely free. They just pop in your province and does that. As soon as you finish that particular focus. We can also get some forts. Right here. 
we can get some forts with this decision and also with this one. And that's really about it. I want to be going through every single decision here because that would take a little bit too long. But a lot of these names are fairly self-explanatory. And like I said, a lot of these are basically research bonuses. That's what it is. We can get three naval dockyards in Danzig, that's a decent one. We can get two air bases in Warsaw. So what are we going to start with? We're going to start with central region strategy, because I want to get the civilian factory ASAP. So why civilian factories? Civilian factories are super important in Hearts of Iron 4, because not only civilian factories are used to build other factories, we currently got 17, but civilian factories are also used kind of as currency to pay for any resources you import. So, let's say you need... what do we need right now? We need some aluminum. So if we decide to import aluminum from trade, we could import aluminum from Soviet Union, for example, or from France in this case, and we would basically have to pay with civilian factories for this. So this is the reason why civilian factories are super important. Not only they are used to build other factories, they are used as currency for imports. You can also get civilian factories if someone is buying your resources. It works both ways. But that's the reason why I'm going to prioritize civilian factories early on. And also military factories. And then the additional research slot. Each focus tree has at least one additional research slot. As Poland, we can also get another one down here, but that takes quite a lot of time to get to. We won't be getting that one for a pretty long time, let's just say. So that's the focus tree. Let's talk about research, because we do have to pick a research. We got three research slots right now, and we can get up to five as Poland. Not every nation starts with three, but they all start with at least two. And the research tree is divided into quite a few different categories. So, from left to right we got infantry, we got support battalions, which unlocks various battalions that you can use in your divisions. Military police, maintenance company, field hospital, logistics company, and signal company. Then we got armor, which unlocks tanks. We got artillery, that's fairly self-explanatory. We got land doctrines, and as Poland, we already start with trench warfare unlocked. I will likely switch over to superior firepower, but we'll see about that. Anyway, each four of these options, or each four of these trees, is explained over here. And you can only go for one of them, in case that's not obvious enough. They are all mutually exclusive with each other. Next up, we got naval which unlocks new ships, basically, that's what it does. We got naval doctrines. We got air, which unlocks fighters, bombers, heavy fighters, strategic bombers, and so on. We can also get jet engines later on, much, much later on. Then we got air doctrine. We got engineering, which are mostly passive bonuses, like research time, but you can also unlock the radar station in the engineering category. And finally, we got industry, which is fairly self-explanatory. We can get production efficiency cap, we can get factory output, and maximum factories in a state. We can go for one of these lines over here. They are mutually exclusive. We can also get construction speed, resource gain, efficiency, and we can build synthetic refineries. These are mostly worth building for larger nations. I don't think I'm going to bother with that as Poland. We won't have enough time to research everything. So, what are we going to research first? We got three research slots. So, we'll grab that research time bonus. That will only take 95 days. We will also grab construction bonus, so plus 10% construction speed, and we'll get basic machine tools, which increases our production efficiency. Now, if you try to research a tech that's ahead of time, as indicated right here, 
you will get a penalty. So for example, right now is January 1936. If we try to research improved infantry equipment one, for example, we'll get a penalty because this technology is two years ahead of time. You can kind of negate this penalty through the focus tree with these bonuses. So in case of infantry weapons, we could get standardization of equipment, which would give us a 50% bonus for infantry weapons, and then we could research that tag in 50% of the time required, but obviously you can also research it in 50% of the time required without any penalties at all. But it can be a valid strategy to go for a particularly important tag that's way ahead of time by using the bonuses. So you could get weapons to quite a lot of time in advance, and it can definitely be worth it if you can build a lot of improved infantry equipment before the war actually starts. But anyway, what are we going to research in the last slot? We are going to grab basic machine tools for production efficiency cap increase. So, that's our research done. Next up, civilian factories. So, like I said, civilian factories are super important, basically, because civilian factories are used to build other factories, and they are used as currency, kind of. So, what we're going to do is, we'll focus on building some additional civilian factories for the first few months, or even the entire first year. We'll just queue up a bunch in advance like this, and then we'll switch to military factories. Now, there's one funny thing here, because if you notice, we have insufficient resources right now, and if you have insufficient resources, you will take a production penalty. However, you can't get a production penalty to civilian factories, which means we could just ignore this and focus on building civilian factories. Because, as you remember, civilian factories are used to pay for imports. Which means that if I import these resources right now, I will lose civilian factories. Or, well, not strictly lose, but they will be used for imported goods. Which means I will be building new civilian factories slower than I otherwise would. So I'm going to ignore the insufficient resources information, at least for the first few months. Next up, we got military factories and dockyards. We need to assign some production there. So, if we go to the production tab, we can decide how we're going to use our military factories. First of all, let's start from the naval dockyard. We can get some additional convoys. They are used for imports and exports and some other things, like transferring troops. We can get a few more. We only got one naval dockyard. We'll be able to get three more for free, though, if we go for that particular decision. And so... I'm not going to build fighters as Poland. Because we simply will not have enough production. It's a luxury at this point. We'll focus almost exclusively on infantry and artillery. We do need support equipment, however because our actual divisions need that. But we will get started on some artillery right away. Now, we currently do not have artillery included in any of our templates, and we will get a warning about that. But that's fine, we need to start stocking up on artillery. And what happens when you start a new production line is that you start with lower production efficiency, and it will go up over time, as you keep that particular production line. So, our production efficiency will slowly increase, and it will eventually reach the cap. But we will be taking a penalty for a while. And as you can see on the tooltip, we do have a penalty from lack of resources. Now, I would normally buy these resources, but our priority early on is to build additional civilian factories, so that's what we will be focusing on. But we can assign some more factories to artillery. We will be needing a lot of artillery before war actually starts. We can do something like this. Alright. And one more thing we should do is start recruiting some divisions. Now, you can create additional division templates, but this requires army experience. You can also edit your division templates, and what I want to do here is add some artillery. 
However, I cannot currently do this, because it requires army experience and we have none. So we'll have to leave it alone for now. But we can start training some infantry divisions, which means we have to assign it to a region. And we can add more units to train them parallel. This should be enough. Three at the same time should be fine. And we can also change priorities. There's no upgrade to do right now. And we don't need reinforcements, so there's no need to change these priorities at the moment. So how do we get army experience before the war actually starts? Because obviously you can get army experience by actually fighting. However, you can also do exercises. And that's exactly what we're going to do. First of all, we'll assign all our divisions to an army. And we'll assign a commander. So, commanders are divided into two different categories. You can assign a field marshal, or you can assign the general. There are two basic differences between them. Generals can only command up to 24 different divisions in their army, while field marshals do not have any such cap, and they have different sets of traits that they can gain as they gain experience. Field marshals have more generic traits, and the generals can get things like specific terrain bonuses that give you plus 5% movement, plus 10% attack, and plus 10% defense in specific terrain. And field marshals get more generic bonuses. This guy, for example, has plus 3% maximum entrenchment, and we are actually going to grab this guy. And I won't be talking too much about battle planning right now, because we won't be fighting anyone for a while. But we, what we can do is assign a front line like this, then our entire army will position itself on the border with the Germans, and then we can start exercising, which will give us army experience over time. It will also consume some infantry equipment. But we will get some army experience, which will allow us to edit our template later on. The plan is to edit the template to add some artillery and add more battalions to hopefully fill the entire division. One division can have up to 25 as you saw. So hopefully, we'll get enough army experience to get all 25. Alright, I think we can unpause for a bit. Anything else we might want to do? No, that's basically it. So there's one more thing to talk about, which is political power. But we'll wait until we get enough political power to actually use it for something. And you can use political power to improve your relations with other nations. But political power, especially early on, is primarily used to hire some advisors that give you certain passive bonuses and change your government in various ways. So that's what we're going to use it for. And you can also change some laws. Like, for example, we could change conscription law from volunteer only to limited conscription. We could change civilian economy to early mobilization, except right now we can't do it. And things like that. That's what political power is used for. For political decisions. Duh. Alright, so I'm going to play on speed 5 for a bit, because not a whole lot will be happening early on. We're just building factories, basically. And waiting for our focus and for our research. As well as for army experience. The first few years won't be super exciting, but we need these years to prepare for war. We just don't stand a chance otherwise. We need to prepare. So, there are a few possible routes that we can take as Poland. We could go fascist or communist, which might seem a little bit counterintuitive, but it's a perfectly valid strategy. In fact, it can be a pretty good strategy, because if we go either fascist or communist, then we would be able to switch from civilian economy to war economy without actually being at war. And switching to war economy would give us plus 20% to military factory construction time. Which is pretty damn good. We will need a lot of military factories in the long run. And this bonus is actually quite valuable. So that's one possible option. And we can go fascist or communist by hiring a political advisor. So there are three types of advisors here. Or well... There's a, an advisor that gives you additional fascism points, communism support points, 
or daily democracy support. This basically increases the support of that kind of party. So if I hire a fascist advisor, the fascist party will increase in popularity daily. The daily change on the tooltip will basically go up from 0 to 0 0.10 in this case. And eventually that party will take over and will go fascist. That's how you align yourself in Hearts of Iron 4. That's how you can go communist, fascist or democratic. By getting daily support for that kind of party and then eventually they will stage a coup. It can happen once they get 30% plus. It's not guaranteed though and as Poland we do not get elections so we basically have to wait for that party to stage a coup. Which has a chance of happening after 30%. But sometimes you have to wait much longer. There are some pretty useful advisors here. So for example, this guy would give us plus 10% military factory construction speed. And that's really damn good. So with this guy and with war economy, we could get plus 30% to military factory construction speed, which is really damn good. I'm strongly considering that route. If we go democratic, we won't be able to do that. But on the other hand, if we go democratic, we will have some options on the right side of the focus tree. So we could draw closer to Britain. We could get intervention focus, draw closer to Britain and volunteer corps. That's one of the options, basically. And simply by getting liberalism, we would get plus 0 0.10 daily democracy support, because you don't have to hire an advisor. You can also grab some of these focuses. So if we go left, we'll get plus 0 0.10 daily communism support. If we go right, we'll get plus 0 0.10 fascism support, which is basically the same as hiring the advisor. We can also stack both. That's a thing that can happen. And there's also one more way to increase support, but not something you can actually directly control. You can boost party popularity in other nations. We can't actually do it right now here, but you can do it. So if you are a fascist country, you can boost fascist party popularity in some other country if you want to try having them go fascist. It's a thing that can happen. Obviously, you can't do it to yourself, but it's a way to change someone's alignment. So you can sometimes try to force a country to go fascist, communist or democratic. It's a thing that can happen. All right, so basically the first few months are going to be waiting for focus and research. That's pretty much what's going to happen. And we'll be waiting. Did I start the exercise? No, I didn't. There we go. Now we did it. We won't have to exercise for three years non-stop, but we'll definitely need at least 50 army experience or so. We can get some army experience from the focus tree as well. And all right, pause. And yeah, we will get some flavor events. So, remilitarization of the Rhineland. That's something that always happens. And we finished central region strategy, which gives us a 50% research bonus for industry. Now, this doesn't apply to something we are already researching. Which means that once we finish our current research, then we'll be able to get 50% bonus to our next research. It does not affect our current research at all. And now we'll grab the civilian factory, like so. Carry on, maximum speed. The game tends to unpause kind of randomly, or well, sometimes it's very easy to press space because you think you're pausing, but in reality you will unpause. So I will slow down to speed 4 once we get close to either a new focus or new research. because I don't want to waste too much time. And Spanish Civil War is happening. The Spanish Civil War is a bit of a dice roll, really. Whether it's Republican Spain or Nationalist Spain that will come on top is kind of random. Not that Italy affects our strategy as Poland, but it might affect it much, much later on. Anyway, we got that research time bonus. 
we can go for the other research time bonus. The sooner we get it, the better, obviously. Speed up. Yeah, the next one will take a while, but that's fine. The sooner we get it, the better. What's going to be next? I think basic machine tools will be next. Nope, the focus will be next. So that will give us a civilian factory. How are the factories going? Not sure if I'm going to wait for all five. We'll see. But I'll build a few civilian factories before even starting to import any resources. The funny thing is, you can still produce things, even if you don't have the resources for it. Which doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but I guess it's for game balance reasons. So, for example, we can produce artillery, even though we have no resources at all. We'll get a huge penalty, but we can still produce them. It won't be efficient, but it won't be zero either. Alright, so we already got five army experience. We need five army experience for each battalion added to the division. So if I edit this right now, and I add an artillery, that will cost me five, as you can see down here. We can already save it. So that will cause artillery to start being added to the divisions. If I go into army overview, and then click equipment details right here, I will see a breakdown of how much equipment we actually need. So we need 400 support equipment right now. And we need 32.9 thousand infantry equipment. That will take a while. And our national focus is complete. That gives us the civilian factory. Now we'll go for the other civilian factory. Which means we'll start from the four-year plan, which gives us a 50% research bonus for construction tech. Now, we still have that industry bonus, and it will not go away until we use it. You can't waste it if you wait too long. It will always be there until you use it. So, as you can see, we have an indication that if we grab one of these, we'll get a 50% bonus. And I think we'll actually go for either improved machine tools or concentrated industry. Now, you have a choice. You can either go for dispersed industry, it basically makes your factories kind of more resistant to bombing. But I think I'll go for concentrated industry for that flat factory output bonus. Not that the other choice is bad. Dispersed industry is mostly good once war actually starts. So after 1939. And we can get that in 85 days, which is pretty good. Republican Spain wants to move troops through our territory. We have no reason to say yes, and they have no reason to move through our territory. I think nationally Spain will win there. But it doesn't really affect us all that much. So, speed 5, and unpause. Construction 1 will be next. So, as I said, the first few years will be fairly slow. Oh, and now we have 152 political power. Which means we can modify our government, and we have a few options here. We could already go for one of the supporters. So if I decide to go fascist, communist, or democratic, I could start working on that right now. Or, as an alternative, I could go for the war industrialist. I'm not actually building war factories yet, but we could pick him up in advance. We have a few other options. We can get army experience daily. This is pretty good, especially early on. 0.05 gain daily. From the other bonuses that are useful early on, we can get minus 10% industrial research time. And these guys will be useful once war actually starts. But some of them are pretty good, especially the infantry guy. We can get chief of army. Again, not something we need right now. I'm going to decide this in the next episode. So, thanks for watching first one, I hope you enjoyed it, and subscribe for more. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.